guys, it's Carrie here with another video, one of my all time favorite drawing programs, Clip Studio Paint, reach out to work with me and is a sponsor of today's video in which I highlight some of the app's best features for Android users. Clip Studio is a cross-platform illustration program that works on various operating systems not just Android. You can get it on Windows, Mac, iOS, and more. You can receive a three month free trial of one of the most reputable art software by clicking the link in the description below. We'll tackle the companion mode functionality first. This feature basically allows you to use your phone as a remote with Clip Studio Paint. And the very first step that you need to get started is by clicking this little phone icon on Clip Studio Paint. Make sure you have it installed on both your tablet and your phone and simply open up Clip Studio Paint on your phone and click the little menu bar and you'll see the companion mode. And from there, you simply have to just scan the QR code and it just connects seamlessly. This feature has been such a life changer, especially when working on the tablet because I could finally hide my menu bar now and have a lot more space for my canvas, which has been super fantastic. The main thing that I love using it so far is for the color wheel, but it also has a lot of other shortcuts built in as well, where you can access a lot of the different menu bar functions, being able to flip your canvas. You're able to even see like a little preview of drawing in one of your menus, mix the colors as well as like certain shortcuts combinations i definitely definitely recommend this feature i use this throughout the duration of this painting process and it did not drain my battery too much on both devices and i was just so surprised to see how stable the connections was uh, i definitely recommend checking out this feature and playing around with it yourself since it has a lot more options than I thought it was. I mostly stick on the color wheel since that was just my favorite use for it. But this is how I have it in real time. I switched over to a different stand since that stand wasn't super comfortable. And the pencil that I'm using right now is called the Norris pencil, uh, the Norris Jumble pencil. I like it down below. I also did a whole separate review on it. And I love using this thing with Clip Studio Paint because the eraser also works. So I like showing these tips and tools how I use them in my actual drawing because when I see these tips and tools videos I wonder oh yeah this is so cool but when would I ever use this myself so I find it really interesting to see how other people use these tips in their workflow so I'm curious to see how you use this in your workflow maybe there is a feature that I didn't know I could use in combination with that and I must add that all these features are available on pretty much all versions of Clip Studio Paint, whether you're using it on your desktop, your iPad, or Android. I personally prefer to draw on Android, specifically Samsung, since I love the ability to use multiple different S Pens. And onto the next feature is the active mirrored window mode. Uh, this feature has been such a life changer when drawing. That's also why I really like the previous feature with companion mode because it allows my screen to be freed up to have the second window of my current drawing, another active window per se. And that means that I can draw on both and it applies to the other one. It basically just gives me another view so that way I can keep my drawing symmetrical. And that has been a thing in my whole workflow throughout this whole painting. And this is a feature that I recently found out that I could do in Clip Studio Paint. And I didn't know why I didn't know about it before. I really wish I learned about it before because I love flipping my canvas a lot. But with this feature, I can just keep one of my instances flipped on one side versus the other. This means so much endless possibility. I can easily check if my drawing is looking wonky or not with, instead of having to flip back and forth. And it's so nice. It's great when, for when doing portraits, but it's even better when you're drawing something full body. So that way you can be super zoomed in on one specific area of your drawing, but then you can still see the overall bigger picture. And it's a little bit bigger than the navigation menu and you can still like draw on it. So if you see something on one instance, you can also draw on that instance and it applies the whole drawing because it's just basically your drawing duplicated again and uh, i don't know oh man this thing 
I, I love this thing so so much it helped me fix a lot of the insecurities that I normally have with my art and it improves my workflow so much faster and even on mobile too that's crazy that's why I really love clip studio paint and uh, until the next feature which is the AI auto colorize tool. This one was super interesting because I tried this tool before and I had trouble to really make it work with my art style. But lately I've been using it as a way for me to slap on the base color. And here's on screen how you apply it. You basically have to set your line art layer as a reference layer. So that way um, the AI tool knows what to reference in terms of where to apply the color. And the next thing that you do is you just apply uh, your base colors as like a hint for the computer to know what to do. It doesn't need to be super perfect, just put it like random scribbles around the area that you would like it to be at and it tries to get it the best that it can. Uh, for me, I ended up doing this step multiple times since I, I, I wasn't unsure what colors that I wanted. Feel free to experiment and try this tool multiple times, different combination, because depending on your art style, it might apply to it differently. Personally, for me, I do not do line art. I just do very loose sketches. So the way it applies to my art would vary a couple of times, but it's really fun way to just lay down a bunch of base colors if you're really lazy like me. One of the downside to laying down colors this way is that you don't have access to separate layers if you want to easily change like the hair color per se so you really have to commit with this method and I personally like it because I've been trying a process of over painting like after I lay down the base colors and use the yeah color tool to get the colors down I start painting on top of it and the reason that I like this tool a lot is because the way it blends in a lot of the base colors is nice it gives this like this like light type of look I, I don't know if that makes sense but if you guys can see right now as I'm drawing how it applies to it um, at first depending what you're drawing it might not do exactly what you want to do but I like that because then it gave me a lot of like fun in the painting process to bring back some of the colors that I really wanted and it made it super fun and it took out a lot of the thinking that I had to do when it comes to filling colors because that process is super painful and if I ever do want to change like something or hair color I kind of just paint over it and I've been liking the way that looks with my art style recently even though I still do have a super anime style and that's how I apply it to my workflow you probably might apply it differently and also another thing about this AI colorize tool is that it makes the layer completely not transparent so if I didn't add in that pink background um, color I would actually have to apply it on top of it because it's no longer see-through anymore it works as a multiply layer so you can still see your line art underneath it so you can still go back in and edit your line line art separately but you won't be able to see your background layer if that makes sense but otherwise i really did enjoy this tool since it just took a lot of the unfun parts about drawing for me so that way i could focus on the more fun parts i hated filling colors and it was a great way for me to just slap on colors really easily and just kind of paint over it and have a lot of fun so since that works with my flow, let me know how it can work with your flow. And my other favorite features with Clip Studio Paint on Android is being able to use keyboard shortcuts. So that's the combination of all the previous features I've talked about because it makes creating professional work anywhere i love that i can undo redo a lot of the shortcuts that i use on my desktop computer also works on android which helped a lot with my workflow mixed with the companion mode being able to have the multiple instances of my drawing open with that feature really helped me breeze through my artwork and those i made it so much more comfortable to just draw and create and even though that i was using a much smaller screen with all of these different tools combined i was able to have a lot of more screen real estate and over here i switch over to my screen recording so that way you guys can see how my layers are set up um i love seeing people's processes especially with their brushes their colors layers and i know that sometimes just recording my screen it's a little bit difficult to see that so i've included this 
point of view in this video since I personally find it interesting so let me know if you guys personally find it interesting too um, especially since I've been doing an over painting uh, method and that brings us to our next feature which is masking layers masking layers are fantastic it's actually this layer that i'm on currently that's highlighted right now which is my line art layer and i'm using it to temporarily erase the line art around the eyes and the great thing about masking layers is that you can uh, basically erase something and you still have access to it in case you change your mind later on like as you guys can see i'm working through this painting i erase the line art for just around the iris area but i can go back and change that if i want that information is still there that's a great thing about masking just temporarily mask it and the way that i access it i normally just access it through the layers panel the masking icon is like right underneath um you guys will see right now as i'm toggling it on and off um another way you can toggle on and off is if you have the keyboard shortcut you can just press shift on the masking layer itself and it will bring back that information right now i'm showing you what it exactly that it masks i use it a lot when i have certain like details um my piece especially with the liner layer or the sketch layer that i'm not sure if i want to bring back or not another way to access this information is by going your layer property at the top um, menu bar clicking layer mask and um, clicking to enable or disable mask and you can use it in a combination with the lasso tool i personally just like turning on the layer and just use the eraser tool to just erase that's basically how i like to use it but you can use it more precisely with the lasso tool so um i really love using that in my workflow since i can be indecisive about certain parts of the drawing and i don't know if i want that feature back or not and right now i'm adding in some details of the us in real time i try to mix in uh some slow parts and some fast Part, so that way this video isn't super long let me know what your favorite part of the drawing process is so that i can know which parts to slow down or which parts not i personally love shading shading is super fun i love playing with a lot of colors and another uh, favorite thing i love in clip studio paint is just being able to have the color history panel as you guys can see right there it makes it easier for me to go back to a lot of the colors that i've picked and it's just really nice to go through because sometimes i pick a color before i'm like oh maybe i want to use it again in this part of the painting there's not a lot of thinking and having to color pick that color again i can just kind of scroll down and now some more rendering and over painting and i have an identity crisis with my art style i really wanted want to be able to do the one layer of painting style but i also love the ability of having multiple layers and be able to change my mind and i've been getting a little bit closer with that by using less layers since especially when you're drawing on mobile especially the tab s7 um I cannot handle as much layers and I don't have as much space so I have to like work a little bit smarter and I have a whole bunch of layers so that's why I've been I really want to get to that one layer style but there's just I, I, I am so indecisive and especially when it comes to shading the hair right now I'm doing some butterfly locks and they're a bit different from regular locks where right they're super detailed they're still super curly but then they're also locked so they were really tricky to shade and color and i switched back over to showing my hands and my screen since i think that's a way to keep the video interesting to see how i do a lot of the details since with the rest of this drawing i'm just doing a lot of rendering and a lot of the times i keep blending my my layers together so i don't take up as much space um, since i am limited by the hardware um tab s7 is powerful but it's not super powerful where i can't have like 160 layers yeah i know that's i can i can get to that much i get super indecisive that i make a layer for every little thing uh so that's why i've been trying to embrace more that painterly style so i could save down on resources and also save myself from 
like the mental headache that I give myself when it comes to picking colors and being indecisive. That indecisiveness caused me to slow down with my art process and stop me from like overthinking. Like with this painting method, when I put a color down, I have to commit. There's not a whole lot I can undo unless I saved a previous version. So, and I think over time it helped me be a bit more confident in my line strokes. Normally, um, my lines are super chicken scratch if that makes sense like I just have a lot of like very unconfident lines that are like super shaky that don't look super nice uh, with this method I'm learning to combine the painterly art style with like a clean sharp edge look even though I don't necessarily like doing line art I just go in and just clean up and add in color I love playing with colors so much and by the steps of the process I decided not to use too much of the keyboard just because I didn't have much space for it uh, where I was sitting at um, so I just mostly used the companion mode and um, the other features as mentioned before the companion mode is it has just been so convenient. I just need to find a way to organize my workspace in Clip Studio Paint where I can still see my brushes so that way I don't have to open up that side panel like I could just leave everything on the right hand side. And here's me going again adding in a lot of the details for the butterfly locks. The hair was the most challenging on process of this piece and this is an original character and I was using a lot of different references from Pinterest that was looking at on another screen and I think I might turn her into an OC. I know a lot of people have been asking me, do you have an OC? Do you have an OC? I think I really like this character. I wanted her butterfly locks to, to look like water because I love the whole concept of like just, you know, hair, water, locks. Oh, I think it's so beautiful. I love painting with a lot of blues and purples. Those are some of my favorite color schemes and I try to incorporate that with eyes but have it not to be super similar to each other where it still stands out. Um, and I had a little bit fun with the eye makeup even though I did not make the eyes look super semi-realistic. There were still huge anime eyes but I still left enough space in there for me to add in that semi-realism shade. There's still so much clip paint studio feature that I enjoy. So if you guys enjoyed this video, check out this video right here to learn my favorite brushes and how to install them on Android. And let me know what your favorite part of this video was and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.